Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we present uh, uh, something that is the outcome of an interplay between uh, soy scientists, ar archaeologists, and uh, historians and archaeobotanists uh, about the, uh, the early development uh, of uh, uh, Brussels in Belgium. And basically, over the last uh, centuries, uh, historians have been uh, heavily uh, debated. Uh, on the scarce, uh, often very questionable historical sources, uh, trying to explain the emergence uh, of this city, which is situated uh, along the steep uh, valley slopes of the Seine River. So in this uh, LiDAR image you see how Brussels is uh, basically, this is the second city wall, this is the first city wall, along the flanks of a steep hill. And if you bike in Brussels, you realize it's a steep hill. <laughs> and uh, basically, um, in the last day, so the problem was really the role of uh, uh, agriculture in the emergence of this as a city. And uh, the general model, I outlined it briefly here, is that between the 11th and 13th century in the North Temperate Europe, there is a, a period of uh, agricultural intensification with uh, a lot of uh, clearance and new land made available. And this, by the 14th century, this, all the available land seems to be uh, put under agriculture. And this is probably due to uh, new techniques like uh, in the rotation, the use of leguminous, uh, <coughs> plants, uh, fodder, and also an, an increase in the amount of livestock. And as we just saw, livestock gives manure, which is a very precious uh, resource, especially in, in uh, urban contexts. And uh, basically, uh, according to this new generation of historians, uh, um, the agricultural development and expansion uh, was an important factor for the early development of Brussels in this period, 11th, 13th century. So the problem was basically, uh, have we found, did, we, did anybody ever found a farmstead in uh, digging Brussels, notwithstanding a lot of archaeological excavation, almost, don't, I would say exclusively, uh, rescue archaeological excavations took place. You see many dots, it, each dot is uh, an excavation. And the answer is no, there's no such farmstead. But in digging, uh, you always find what you don't, what you're not looking for normally, uh, or something you cannot explain. But we found uh, oftentimes uh, what's called dark earth layers. So dark earth is a, you know, uh, it's a term that comes from British archaeology, and it it basically uh, is meant to it defines uh, thick. Uh, dark, of course, um, homogeneous and rather uh, organic rich layers or units or stratigraphic units that are normally covering rather wide areas, wide areas in urban context. Okay, and uh, uh, this is just uh, a selection of uh, dark earth from Brussels. So you can see uh, they have a little bit of variability, of course, because the soil conditions are not always the same, but in general thick, dark accumulation that, that can be, uh, not always, but oftentimes, are rich in uh, archaeological material within. And uh, basically, um, we developed, uh, with the support of the Brussels Capital Region, uh, a resource protocol to deal with these dark earths. And, uh, okay, this is a you know, complicated uh, diagram, but uh, what's the point is basically that we use archaeopedology, so which means standard uh, soil analysis, and micromorphology, so the analysis of thin sections of soils under the microscope, archaeozoology, that you know, everybody knows what it is, more or less what it is, and uh, archaeobotany, and for archaeobotany we include carpology, charcoal studies, and phytolith studies. So phytolith are the uh, siliceous remains within grasses, okay, that they withstand the, the composition. And basically, uh, what we saw is that uh, uh, in dark earth, uh, uh, the dark earths represent um, many activities, okay, M meaning that many different activities give rise to dark earth deposits. 
and these are activities such as pasture or just occupation, agricultural or horticultural fields, accumulation and dispersal of uh, fertilizer, manure or ameliorating agents. We find big traces of input of uh, byproducts of um, artisan activities and also there is a big uh, comp um, contribution from just input of soil, from quarrying, from digging, from backfill, um, ground raising. So all these things and not only one activity but normally a palimpsest of activities give rise to dark air deposits. But what was interesting for us is that basically uh, we managed to see that okay we didn't find, find the farmsteads but we found uh, layers that testify um, among these activities oftentimes agricultural activities or horticultural activities or uh, gathering of uh, livestock okay pastor and I will show you one example just to give you an idea of uh, the work uh, that we carry out at uh, in Brussels uh, is the court of Hoogstraten, so it's in, within the first city wall, okay, center, typical urban excavation. And uh, in this site, basically two uh, levels of dark earth were found. Uh, we're going to focus on the, on the lower one uh, because, okay, the top one we don't care, the lower one is uh, dated to that, you know, 11. Uh, 11th, 12th century, so it's in that window that is crucial for the development of Brussels as a uh, town. And uh, if we look in inside this dark earth with that research protocol I showed you before, basically we notice that uh, it represents really a palimpsest, palimpsest of activities, meaning activities superimposed on each other and based on the archaeobotanical and uh, soil properties we um, concluded that uh, uh, the earliest phase of dark earth formation in this site uh, basically entailed a not entailed, corresponded to a pasture land okay a soil as a pasture so this is what we see under the microscope okay looking at this these are thin sections which looks under the microscope and these are happy worms okay because they can drill through the soil and high biological biological activity characterize this type of scenario so uh, in the, let's say the soil qualities are such that the biological activity is uh, high and the, there's an open landscape grass vegetation but then this dark earth of the Kurt of Oikstraten basically developed into something else and we find in the top part traces of agriculture okay so it, it went from this from this to something like that and what are the uh, main indicators of agriculture? It, the main information we get comes from the phytolith study. Okay, so you see this is how they look in the thin sections. These little uh, um, silica uh, remains that are um, that can be identified and interpreted, give an interpretation as an agricultural field. So basically, uh, if we plot what we found uh, in Brussels uh, for the 10th, 13th century, uh, within mostly, uh, almost exclusively, within the first uh, city wall, which is in, was built in the 13th century, um, the picture that emerged is like uh, an alternation of, uh, not an alternation, the presence of pasture, uh, parcels, crop fields, and also activities like quarrying, there's a lot of soil movement, meaning extraction and produ production of quicklime in some sites uh, that give us a picture of uh, um, activities related to the primary sector which fit well in a rural just this, the I, I cannot pronounce the German word that uh, my, my colleague before uh, as uh, before me used but like a rural town a town where the inhabitants or a proto town where inhabitants are busy with rural activities, typical of the rural activities. And, and from the soil and from the um, archaeobotanical picture, it really, um, if we didn't know we were inside a city or something that was going to become a city, it could be you know, any uh, really rural settlement. The, the spectrum of the species is the same, the soil working is the same, etc. etc. Uh, so the, 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 the say the conclusion of our study uh, is a switch from the traditional historical model that is very debated because it's uh, not really uh, let's say 
truthed by archaeological finds. The traditional model was like the city of Brussels develops around a castrum or a castle, okay, which is the nucleus, and then around it a new community or a community finds uh, um, basically their place, and this is going to then become uh, a city surrounded by the first uh, uh, walls. The model we um, we think we can propose at least uh, or discuss is like a, a basically of many rural uh, or settlements or nuclei anyway uh, um, that at some point they become denser and they merge together and this um, this picture this second model would also explain the um, the side the shape of the of the city wall which doesn't uh, in this way it goes basically this is the river valley and so here we're on a slope okay and it uh, mm, uh, it doesn't really follow any morphological or geomorphological uh, uh, limitation or necessity. So uh, we think that this, for example, this bulge here, it uh, could be explained in sort of trying to uh, contain, to uh, embrace uh, the, the status quo at the moment in which they, um, they um, surround this set, this set of nuclei, which with strong rural agricultural uh, connotations. Um, I just would like to acknowledge, uh, um, of course, the capital region that uh, funds this, uh, finances this research and the whole team uh, that is behind it, and uh, also other people that are always a mixture between archaeologists, archaeobotanists, and soil people. So, thank you.